since. This is a whole new year. It's also a year the retooled violators have dominated. There's no stopping us. Only one obstacle remains on the road to redemption, the bricklayers. Last year, they ground the Violators' championship dreams into dust. Yo, Ski, we waxed them last year, we're gonna wax them again. Once again, these hated rivals square off to determine MTV's rock and jock b-ball title. That's right. Will the Bricklayers repeat and establish a dynasty? Not if the Violators have anything to say about it. We waited long enough, let's get it on. Knock you out your socks, b-ball jam number two. From MTV to you, to watch your favorite stars and pros go head to head to see who's in shape, who winds up dead. Tired on the court, taking no shorts. You know the name, now it's time for the game. It's well, the rock and jump, b-ball well, it's the rock and jump, it's the rock and jump, b-ball jam. Venture. Each team must have two professionals and three celebrities on the court at all times. The scoring system has been simplified. Shots made by any player within the college three-point circle are worth two points. And baskets made beyond it are worth three points. And once again, MTV has placed scoring pods at strategic locations on the floor. Shots made from these positions are worth 10 points. Our refs, Bill Spooner, Hugh Hollins, and Greg Willard will be calling fouls as in a normal... Yeah, Steve Reno. An astute observation, Ken. Still, this is unusual since tradition dictates that the big men handle the opening tip. Now remember, Steve, this is rock and jock basketball. You know what that means? Tradition don't mean a thing. And speaking of tradition, there's a lack of sportsmanship at midcourt. There's a lot of joying going on out there. Can you believe this, Ken? The game hasn't even started, and they're going at it. Chris Mullen and Sean Kemp embroiled in a pushing and shoving match, and now they're wrestling. Reggie Miller's involved. There's Marky Mark, Joey Lawrence, Queen Latifah, Don Lewis, and Don Lewis goes flying to the floor, and now John Sally has Sean Kemp in a headlock. Boy, it's going to be interesting to see how Hugh Hollins handles this. So Olympic gold medalist Chris Mullen, the first to incur the wrath of Robin Ficker. Mullen must be thinking, this is what I get for bringing home the gold? Now he knows how Angola felt against the Dream Team. And while Chris Mullen goes off to meet his fate, let's get this game started. And Don Lewis and... Here we go! Latifa taps it over to Reggie Miller, the long pass down to Ian Ziri. And he is fouled hard by Marky Mark. Six, three shots, and here we go. Here come the Bricklayers, the defending champs on the attack. That misfire was taken by Sean Kemp of the Seattle Supersonics. Reggie Miller with the alley-oop attempt to Kemp, who was looking for the monster jam, and they just failed to click. And Don Lewis shaken up on the play. Meanwhile, at the other end, John Sally able to convert. John Sally traded in the offseason from Detroit to Miami for a first rounder. Here's a steal by Marky Mark. Marky Mark with a spectacular move. Kurt Rambis Whoa. from the first annual Rock and Jock B-Ball Michael Bevins with a gorgeous maneuver to the hoop. I believe he arrives undaunted, unchallenged. Reggie Miller brings it down. Reggie Miller of the Indiana Pacers, who had 76 of the Violators' 173 points last year and lost. John Sally will bring it down. Goes behind the back against Sean Kep. Shovels it to Don Lewis. Who lost the handle? <laughs> the multi-talented Don Lewis. Here's a steal by Marky Mark. A two-on-one with Biv. And it's spun away by Sean Kemp. No mercy. <laughs> Miller behind the back. Here's Queen Latifah with a nifty move. And John Sally clears the board for the Bricklayers. Pinballs it off of Miller. Into Bill. Biv Devaro. Michael Bivens. Player coach Michael Bivens. Michael Bivens, whose sports fantasy is shaking a pro and scoring in this game. I am searing too hard. Marky Mark yanks it down. The baseball pass is picked off by Reggie Miller. 
Lawrence from the foul line off the mark. Ian Zeri with the rebound. Ian Zeri. The very talented Ian Zeri. Not only an That's actor, Ian Zeri. Also sings and dances. Now, how do you know that, Steve? Or don't you want to go into it? He came over and told me, Ken. He said, Steve, not only do I act, but I sing and dance. <laughs> Robert Townsend, the violators weren't about to give up as they went on a 32-6 run. To Reggie Miller for 10. Here's Kevin Willis. Ahmed pulls up. A 10-pointer. Into the anybody for the monster down. At the end of one quarter of play, it's the Violators 34, the Bricklayers. The unified team, I guess not. One quarter in the books, it's the Violators 34, the Bricklayers 18. Here's Chris Mullen for 10. No! Sorry. <laughs> now that you can say, Ken, I allow you to say no or maybe. Right. But, but you I, can't, I, I say, can't yes. say yes. Oh. Okay, so no one has no one has yet to scream out yes and have that been their thing. Okay. Well, I mean no. The inbounds from Michael Bivens to John Sally. Oh, spectacular inbounds play, Ken. I just hope the folks in Miami are going to appreciate it this year. And the folks in Seattle might not appreciate that as the fans chant air ball in the ears of Sean Kemp. Brooklyn's Chris Mullen. Let's fly. Near air ball there. Here's Marky Mark who backs up looking for 10 being guarded by Queen Latifah. I never thought I'd be saying <laughs> Marky Mark in the true spirit of Robert Parrish and Benoit Benjamin, double zero. Sean Kemp behind the back with a reverse jam. He's stealing the show. Sean Kemp, some of his monster dunks make Daryl Dawkins seem like Mother Teresa. Michael Bivens with a very nice move. He's got a game, Biv. You know, I call him Biv. Well, you're tight, with him, Michael. I'm down with him. I'm out with him, I'm in with him, I'm down with him. <laughs> Here's a foul being called on uh, somebody. <laughs> in the other colored jersey. It's on Joey Lawrence of Blossom, the comely hunk. Look out now, Ken, here he comes behind the bow, brother Sean Kemp. Oh my lord. What do you call that? He passed it to himself. Can you get an assist on your own basket, Steve? You can now. Who's going to tell him otherwise? Not me. Here's Kemp again. He bounced it off Mullen. Almost got it back. He's doing it all. Marky Mark from 10. That's a 10-pointer for the Markster. The kid who said no to new kids on the block. And you've got to believe his latest album. I think Tug McGraw had a hand in on that one. Here's Sean Kemp again. Super move, but it wouldn't go. A two on nothing, and the unselfish Michael Bivens passes to Thon Moore. How do you spell teamwork, Steve? Michael Bivens. R-O-L-A-I-D-S. <laughs> Here's Queen Latifah. 21 years of age out of Newark, New Jersey. Here's a four on nothing for the Bricklayers. Mullen, a 10-pointer for Chris Mullen of the Golden State Warriors and the U.S. Olympic Green Team. And Townsend calling for a timeout. It looked like it went in. <laughs> That's what Chris Mullen is saying. <laughs> Jeff Amin. Pretty move along the oh, baseline. Six points, I believe. Base player from Pearl Jam, who actually made his uh, acting debut in the movie Singles this year. And his favorite team, the New Jersey Nets. He says they're the team of the 90s. He didn't say 18 or 19. Well, you know, they do a lot of uh, moshing and uh, stage diving. That's probably why he's a Nets fan. And Chris Mullen hits another 10, vying for the MVP. Gorgeous move right there by Nate Morris. They call him Vanderbilt, whose favorite foreign country, incidentally, Ken, is Kalamazoo. Nice spin move by Bivens. Boy, is he looking sharp. And Mully just stole the ball. You sound like Johnny Most. I feel like Johnny Most. Nice save at the bench by base. Bomb they did. Connecting on four of 18 attempts as they storm to a 19-point lead. And a 10-pointer by Danny Manning. It was violator Billy Owens' 10-pointer with time running out that finally stopped the bleeding. And while our teams make some halftime adjustments and sort things out, let's shift some gears of our own. Here's House of Pain to perform Jump Around.
get ya. I'm coming to get ya. Spitting out lyrics. Call me a wetter. Can't make it down. Performance by House of Pain doing their hit video, Jump Around. Now, having more than their share of trouble from the cottage three point line were Nate Morris, Joey Lawrence, and Queen Latifah. Then it was time for violator coach Robert Townsend to pull out the stops. There you go, he hit the money ball, Steve. Can he take the lead? Townsend sunk five out of 15 shots, leaving Flea in a do or die situation. Look at him. Reminiscent of Frank Hodges at the NBA three-point contest. A tiny pepper buried six consecutive shots at one stage to walk away with the crowd. I just had to roll and stroll and uh, be singing and zany and wacky and crazy, you know? Our slam dunk contest found Michael McCary, Jeff Ament, and Don Lewis attempting some amazing dunks mixed results. In the end, it boiled down to a two-man battle. Defending champ, Marky Mark, and acapella upstart, Nate Morris. After lengthy deliberation, a new champion was crowned. Let's just look at it this way. We come back next year, we both go for it. Well, here we go. We're ready to set the stage for the second half here at Pauley Pavilion. Steve Albert, Ken Ober. Very quickly, Bricklayers 74, Violators now 66. Here comes Bill. He shoots it down court to Sally out of bounds. Again, John Sally, an addition here at the half in a coup, somewhat of a, a contract coup, joining the Bricklayers. Signed to the unorthodox half game contract. The Intimidator, John Sally of the Miami Heat. And Reggie Miller just hit a 10 pointer. Reggie Miller now has 30. Trying to chase his last year's mark of 76 points. Reggie Miller is trying to break Will Chamberlain's record of 100 points in one game. Sally is off the mark. Marky Mark gets the rebound and then lost the ball. Marky Mark today without. <laughs> I want to run that bias one more time. <laughs> and a revamped and restressed. With oh, I again. did it again. You I'm can't, sorry. It's in the small I'm print, sorry, but you I can't did. say yes. Okay. Hey, gee, I, did, I didn't really go yes. I no, just or maybe you can say. Fue Latifa hanging underneath for the easy <laughs> An and exquisite it. pass from Sean Kelly. And put away by the Queen of Rap. Marky Mark bounce pass to Chris Mullen. Here's the lob underneath the alley oak to John <laughs> Sally. <laughs> Two Brooklynites hooking up there. There you go. Spider Sally. Jeff Ahmed of Pearl Jam. You know, I tried that on toast one day. It was great. <laughs> I thought you were supposed to use it on your teeth if you're a uh. smoker. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Nate Morris overshoots. Very disgusted with himself. But Sean there. Kemp is there to pick up the piece. Kemp playing the role of vacuum cleaner. Anything near the basket, Kemp is sucking up and spitting out. The, oh, that sounds disgusting. 82-80, <laughs> the Violators. After losing last year, looking to bounce back to beat the Bricklayers. Now, although the, the crowd may seem a little sedate, that's because we're in California, but this is a very exciting game. Yes. Look at the score, Steve. Marky Mark inbounding to Chris Mullen. A two-point lead yes. for the Violators. Michael Bibbins runs into a couple of guys in blue, and John Sally right there for the easy two. Sally having an unbelievable third period. Now here's my point. When you're that tall and you're, how can you not put the ball in the hoop every single time? 6'11", John Sally and Sean Kemp at 6'10", 
overshoots and Sally again exploding to the basket. John Sally. You know who's been very quiet here in the second half? Oh. Robin Ficker. Robin Ficker, yes. right. But wait a minute, the penalty box door swings open as I say that, Ken Over. What a move. And yes. he puts it down. Yes. Very nice. Here's Jeff Oman for 10 with a man in his face. What a shot. Richmond for 10. They are coming fast and furious now. And he made it under the gun. That's the end of the third period here at Pauley Pavilion. With the score, the Bricklayers, 109. And Michael McCarry tied up nicely there by Brian Robbins. They'll jump it up. Tremendous sportsmanship being uh, displayed here at the second annual Rock and Jock B-Ball Jam. It really brings a tear, period. Here's Reggie Miller looking for that elusive 10 pointer. It's put back in by Sean Kemp, who has been everywhere tonight. Kemp now with 18 points. Still an 11 point lead for the Bricklayers. Once again, we want to point out this game for a very worthy Richmond. Formerly one third of the great run TMC at Golden State hits the 10. Mitch Richmond coming on strong here in the late going. He has 25 points, and the Bricklayers have surged to a 21-point bulge. A 21-point fourth-quarter lead normally signifies a blowout, but the B-Ball Jam is anything but a normal game. And with the 10-point shot, anything is possible. All you got to do is play Reggie. The strategy here by the uh, Bricklayers is to try and keep Reggie Miller from doing just that, but it's not working. Back it goes to Miller. Yeah! Richmond from 10. Oh, what a blast as Sean Kemp goes into orbit. There's the infamous fat lady practicing her Bricklayers. Three minutes to go, Ken. Here we go again. Very dramatic. Can they do it? Nate Morris for 10. No. Oh, I don't know about that. Should have been goaltending. Looks like goaltending. Chris Mullen may have gotten away with it. Flee to Bev. Michael Bevins able to convert with 2.40 to go. And it's a five point brick lay -a lead. The Violators need a basket badly here. Nate Morris for 10. No. no. But Willis gets it back. Kevin Willis turns on Marky Mark and fires it off the rim. Billy Owens keeps it alive for the Violators. A 10 point try. Good. Yeah, he did it. What a clutch shot by Billy Owens of the Golden State Warriors and the Violators lead 143 138 with 2 12 to go. This is unbelievable Steve. A one hand around the fly by Mullen. Oh, man. What a shot. Hey, anyone who paid to get into this building paid to get into this building. We say that right off the bat. Can I echo those words? Here's Clay and he is fouled with a reach in the by Billy Owens. The call by Hugh Holland. I'm quite confident in my team as you can see. Wait a minute, we'll leave this cat. Wow, and they have such a nice relationship off the court. I can't believe you's treating her that way. If she had sung, obviously the game would have been over. Thus right. the strategy of referee Hugh Hollis. Nicely done, Hugh. Giving us 1.57 left to play on the clock. Flee. 143, 138, the Violators by five. Oh, would this be an upset? The Violators looking for revenge. Trying to knock off the defending champion Bricklayers. Nate Morris lost the ball. Big turnover for the violin. Here comes Flea. This is Pippins. Had to sidestep referee Greg Willard. Mullen from 10. The southpaw can't hit. Kevin Willis streaking down the middle. And lost the ball off Sally. Here comes Pivens. It's a two on one. Oh, and he threw the ball away. Big break for the Violators. What a break. Look Michael. at that. What did you learn from that, Steve? Why put the eggs in the pantry if you're going to turn them upside down? <laughs> I got to write that one down, folks. The Violators 143, the Bricklayers 138. With a minute 15 and counting. Big shot by Nate Morris. He thought he was fouled. No call. They're not calling anything now. Marky Mark from 10. Now off the side of the rim. Flee. 
Marky Mark, he's got some room. It's a three-point ball game. The Violators, 143, the Bricklayers, 140 with 50 seconds to go. It's a mouthful. And a foul on the play against the Bricklayers. 48 seconds left, Coach. 48. Ball control. Ball control is ours. Ball control. We need one. That's all we need. 48 seconds to go, but I feel like we're going to do it. There's Reggie Miller, 50 points on the night. You can all but put it away here, Steve. Looking to extend the lead for the Violators, he does. That's it's an one, insurance pass. Little insurance, 145, 140. Violators, 46 seconds. And you know what has to be done. Here's Flea on the 10. Flea flings from 10. Down. Seconds remaining. Here's Jeff Ahmed. The rebound by Chris Mullen. Here's the long pass for Bibbins. The ball fake on Miller. On Sally now. The Bricklayers with the five point lead on the ball. All they have to do is milk the clock. 15 seconds to go. Nearly stolen away. Unbelievable. Flee. Four little letters. One little man. Ten big points. Oh, there you go, buddy. And now a whistle and a foul. Look at them. Congratulate Flea. All right, Chris Fowler will go to the uh, free throw line, one of the uh, supreme foul shooters in the NBA. When God made basketball players, he just carved out Chris Fowler in the words of Magic Johnson. Shooting off to the side. Very interesting. Rebound to Kevin Willis. Timeout. Timeout uh, Violators. And now this is where Robert Townsend, the player coach of the Violators, really earns his money. Now what do you think a coach says at this point in the game? You're down by five points. You have seven seconds left. What could a coach say? You need now, to win. Hey, everybody over on that team is going to be converging to me. So you other guys got to circle around the tents because they're all going to be coming to me. All right? You win? Yeah. Hey, you get the tent. You get it. Yeah, OK. No, no, no. Let's go, man. Hey, this is our game, y'all. This is our game. Well, Ken Over, it is deja vu all over again. Will it go into the hands of Reggie Miller? Last year, you recall, Ron Harper tried a 10-pointer to give the Violators a last-second victory. Seven seconds to go. Bricklayers 150, Violators 145, just like last season. Now, what about the question, what's the strategy with Miller taking it out? Well, he might get it back. They're looking for Miller. Miller's looking for the 10-pointer. And good strategy by John Sally to foul him. And that killed off three seconds with four seconds remaining. Reggie Miller. He could be the man of the hour. He could pull it out. He's got to get into one of those 10-point circles. They're going to look for number 31. Jeff Ahmed gets it into Miller. The overplay by Chris Mullen. And Mullen made the big play. One second, they won't even get a shot off. And the Bricklayers prevail. The Bricklayers defend their MTV Rock and Jock B-Ball Jam Championship. Unbelievable. Big defensive, but over there by Chris Mullen. They could never get the ball to Reggie Miller, who wanted to take the 10-pointer to pull it out. Instead, the Bricklayers hang on for the final score of 150 to 145 over the Violators. What a ball game. Even the fat lady enjoyed it. And she's smiling and she's singing because it is over. All because of a man named Flea. We're here with Jeff Ahmed of Pearl Jam, a winner of the Coca-Cola co-MVP. And although you lost the game, you win the co-MVP. Has to be a bittersweet feeling for you, Jeff. <laughs> it, it was a bitter loss, but, but Flea, my buddy, hit the big shot. Flea flings from 10. Down! They cheated. It was a setup. OK, I'm standing here with the champion bricklayers, the co-MVP. It's a Flea, the hero of the game. You know, I'm always clowning around and stuff, and I'm a clown. But actually, I respect basketball seriously as an art form. It was a good effort by both teams. I got the queen here. I'm happy. I'm the king. I think next year, the Violators will come out the victor. I think Fleece should get the, the, the whole MVP instead of co-MVP. It was like deja vu all over again for Reggie Miller, just like last year. Couldn't come up with the big shot down the stretch. So a tremendous game. The Bricklayers over the Violators right now. Let's take a look at the game in review. For the second year in a row, the B-Ball Jam came down to a final shot. Flea buried a dramatic 10-pointer that overcame a late Violators rally. 
In one of the game's individual battles, Michael Bivens showed boys to men's Michael McCarry and Nate Morris why he calls the shots for the East Coast family. Bivens coached his team to victory while contributing 12 points and six assists, double the totals of both boys to men members. Marky Mark lost his slam dunk title, but enjoyed another banner game with 15 points and a game high six steals, including this one, which landed him in a bit of trouble. The Seattle connection of Jeff Ament and Sean Kemp clicked for a total of 44 violator points and 17 rebounds, including several Kemp monster dunks. And Reggie Miller turned in another MVP performance as he connected on five bombs from 10-point range for a total of 50 points, in addition to his eight rebounds. In the end, the spotlight shined on a spark plug named Flea, who played inspired defense, heckled the heckler, scored 16 points, won the three-point shooting contest, and most importantly, nailed the game winner. Some fantastic highlights from tonight's Rock and Jock B-Ball Jam. There you have it. Another B-Ball Jam is in the books. Second year in a row I've lost this game. Oh, I'm going to Disneyland. I dispute the flea shot. No, I'm actually not going to Disneyland because the one time I went to Disneyland, I had a uh, purple hair and it wouldn't let me in. When I'm 25 and I sit there with my kids, I'd be like, yo, I played with Sean Kemp. Steve Albert and Ken Over, oh my goodness. We in trouble. We were I cheated. Think so. We were cheated. I think so. I'll talk to you later. Be my camera, only my camera. Look at that beautiful blush she's wearing. You did it, yeah. baby. You took it home. F10. So get back out there and try to imitate a basketball player, you wimp. How could an eight footer miss a dunk? <laughs> Everyone knew it was coming to me. I think, you know, it's unfair to have someone my size on the court because I just dominate. For Ken Ober, our entire crew, it was for a great cause, the Pediatric AIDS Foundation. This is Steve Albert saying so long, everybody. We'll see you again next year. Got dunked on.